Hi everybody, this is Agnes from No Sediment and today we will be on the hunt for the best Bordeaux blend. Yes, today I'm going to blind taste Bordeaux blends from all around the world, including Bordeaux region itself, to determine where best blend can be found. But before we start the blind tasting, let's take a moment to explore what exactly a Bordeaux blend is. Bordeaux is undoubtedly one of the most famous winemaking regions of France and also happens to be one of the largest in terms of size and volume. And as with most classic European winemaking regions, Bordeaux as well has allowed and recommended grape varieties for producing their wines. For still red wines, these are Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Carmenere, Malbec and Petit Verdot. In Bordeaux, red wines are almost always blend of at least two of these grape varieties, hence the name Bordeaux blend. However, the grapes I mentioned are not exclusive to Bordeaux. They have traveled well and now are grown in almost every major winemaking region worldwide. And often, just as in their home region, these grapes are blended to create an overall harmonious and balanced wine. Bordeaux blend is not really a regulated term. It kind of refers to a wine that has been blended from at least two of these grape varieties. And in some cases, even allowing small percentages of grapes that are not necessarily associated with Bordeaux region, such as Syrah. So today we're going to blind taste six Bordeaux blends. One from the King region itself, Bordeaux, and five others from Argentina, California, Chile, South Africa, and New Zealand. We will try to assess which one is which and see how different terroir and winemaking can influence the final wine. We will add a bit of fun and rate these wines as well. And who knows, maybe these grape varieties shine brighter outside of their homeland Bordeaux. These wines were kindly provided by eight wines, more on them later. And they were poured by my cameraman, so I don't know which one is which. So let's go, wine number one. As expected, wine number one shows deep ruby color. I think this is the color that more or less all of these wines will be presenting. Quite shy on the nose, uh, to be honest. It kind of offers some fresh plums, some fresh blackberries, cherries, um, and they are mixed with some sweet spices, cinnamon especially, maybe slightly hints of nutmeg. But the fact that it is a shy nose and the fact that it's not very overt or kind of crumbly or vanilla-like, like ultra sweet fruit characters would you know, bring me to Europe. So I would want to say that this is Bordeaux, but this is first wine I've tried and not even tasted, just smelled. The acidity is definitely elevated. Tannins are firm, slightly chalky. Also on the palate, this wine seems old worldy. I don't want to say that it has like a lot of savory fruit that sometimes I associate with Old World without tasting all of the other wines. If I would have to guess right now, I would say that wine number one is Bordeaux. Let's move to wine number two. Mm. This is quite aromatic wine and wine number two shows a lot of green flavors like eucalyptus, uh, bay leaf, uh, rosemary, garig as well. But it is intervened with like black plums, blackberries, blueberries. Sometimes these green flavors can be overpowering and, uh, and not all people like it. I think in this specific wine, uh, these aromas are telltale of specific grape variety, which is Carmenera. Carmenera is highly associated grape with chili. My first guess would be that this is Chile. This is beautifully mixed and beautifully balanced and quite complex nose. Mm. And the rich opulent fruit behind, like all the blackberries, ultra ripe ones. Alcohol is high, which kind of summons me in the new world, but acidity is very high as well, lively, refreshing. I mean, it doesn't feel jammy or it, it is very elegant and nicely done. But like some smokiness, some cigar box, some cedar wood, definitely lovely one. Wow, and the aftertaste, it is filled with rich plump fruit that is kind of coated in this vanilla and toasty characters. I still stick to Chile. So wine number three is actually quite aromatic wine, I would say. It shows like mix of red, red crunchy fruit and uh, black currant, 
、uh, blueberries, but they are all very fresh and crunchy, and maybe not necessarily ultra ripe in character. It also shows some nice garig and、uh, French Mediterranean spices and herbs、uh, intervene within the flavors. Ooh, wow, the acidity is actually quite high. It is、uh, very refreshing. Wow, very firm and and kind of、uh, sticky type of tannin.、Mm, okay, can I change? Can I change my guesses? I am of course not sure, but.、Um, I might want to say that this is more of a Bordeaux、uh, than maybe the first one. I will come back to first one, and maybe there will be other Bordeaux for me in the next、uh, wines. But this wine shows moderated, very well integrated alcohol, very high acidity, and、uh, quite aromatic nose,、uh, which is also filled with some savory hints, like savory fruit. So yeah, this. More screams Bordeaux to me than maybe the first one. Wine number four. Oh, the color, the deepness of the color. Oh, and the rich, rich black and ultra ripe fruit mixed with vanilla. Oh no! If I would say right away, I would say California. This is so rich, plump, dark, ripe, filled with like sweet notes of vanilla toast. Sweet toast, almost like buttery and rich, opulent nose. This is such a typical California style for me. I'm, <laughs> I hope I'm not wrong. That richness and opulence of the fruit translates on the palate as well. We do have these very firm but ultra ripe tannins. The alcohol, of course, is elevated, but it is lovely integrated and definitely not like kicking or warming or or or, or burning or, or anything. But I would want to say that this is、um, Napa, California. It is expensive wine. It is expensive oak. It is rich and it is opulent. But overall, I think it is、uh, very typical, which makes it、uh, of a very high quality. I mean, if the wine speaks of its origin. It is one of the quality points for it. Should we move to wine number five? Mm mm mm. Earl Grey tea, black tea.、Mm. You kind of have to talk with this wine, and then it kind of gives you these fresh crushed strawberries, raspberries, which is not common aromatics to find in a, in a Bordeaux blend, at least for me. It also has some lilac, some floral characters, violets. Oh, a lot of violets! Like it is so aromatic. Like it's very floral wine.、Hmm. You know what these flowers for me kind of stands for?、Uh, Malbec. <laughs> I could only nose this wine. It is so beautiful on the nose. It is absolutely great. So elegant.、Mm. This wine definitely gives you old world kind of structure. It has. Lovely, high acidity. It has firm tannins. I don't think I have found a lot of wines with this kind of nose, and this is this kind of speaks of of Malbec for me a lot. And where Malbec dominates usually, well, that's Argentina. And、uh, I would want to say that this is Argentinian、uh, Bordeaux blend with a lot of percentage of Malbec. I really like this wine. Even if I'm wrong, this is wine I would probably want to come back to.、Uh, I really, really enjoy this. Okay, wine number six. This wine has a lot of roastiness on the on the nose, like roasted meat, smoky character, cigar box, like like that kind of like roasted coffee. So very rich and opulent, very ripe black fruit. What do we have left?、Um, If I stick with wine number three being Bordeaux and wine number one, I don't know. Then、uh, I have New Zealand and South Africa left, and、um, I would say this has the richness and opulence of South Africa and that roastiness, that、like、kind of smoked meat character. I often associate with South African wines. Wow, wow,、um, it. <clears throat> It definitely has very sticky, high, elevated, firm tannins. That kind of speaks of itself of Cabernet Sauvignon. It's almost difficult for me to speak right now because it kind of 
dries your mouth completely. So I want to come back to wine number one and maybe I can taste wine number three and wine number one next to each other. I still find this wine very shy on the nose, but it kind of lingers, it kind of shows that very bright blueberries, blackberries, firm tannin, fresh acidity. Let's try wine number three. Now this one has way more savory fruit. So this definitely is Bordeaux. And wine number one then should be, should become New Zealand. Now that my lips and teeth are in a deep sea blue color, let's reveal the wines. So wine number one. I rate my wines in 10 point scale and for this one I would give 8.5. It is very good quality. I just misread it. And it is a Gimlet Gravels Craigy Range Bordeaux blend and I think it is mostly based on uh, Merlot. And now that I come back to this wine it actually shows a lot of plum plummy notes so that should have given it away. Wine number two, I was pretty convinced it was Chile, so let's open it up. I actually enjoyed this wine quite a lot. I would give it nine points. It was very complex on the nose and all the green aromas were beautifully integrated. So let's find out. All right, so it is Clos Apalta, Le Petit Clos, uh, and this is wine indeed from Chile. I think their top wine got perfect score from James Suckling, 100 points. So that is a good producer overall. Wine number three, I do hope that this one is indeed Bordeaux. The acidity was quite high, and I would give this wine a 0.5. Yeah, 8.5. It is indeed Bordeaux, Malactic La Gravier, from Pissac Leonian Bordeaux. Um, I think it is mostly dominated by Cabernet Sauvignon and definitely that savory fruit character, that talky tannin, that elevated acidity, it kind of gives it away. So um, yeah, um, great wine. So wine number four, I was pretty convinced it was uh, California, I think, and I would rate this wine eight points. Okay. I've actually been fortunate enough to visit Robert Mondavi Winery. So this is Maestro, a wine made to honor Robert Mondavi himself. Very typical, very rich in fruit, something that you kind of expect from Napa wines. And what a label, I mean. So wine number five. That was wine that I liked the best uh, of all these uh, six wines that I tasted today. And from my side, it would get a perfect score floral and I'm convinced it's Argentina <laughs> and it is Gran Enemigo and similarly as with the Chilean example this wine as well recently received the other wine uh, other label of theirs recently received a perfect score from James Suckling which is 100 points and this specific wine as well received a perfect score from me which is 10 points and lastly wine number six was South Africa and I can say that right now without a doubt because I have revealed all the five wines and this is the only winery or wine region left. I scored this wine um, 7.8. It is great wine, it showed a lot of that roasty flavors, a lot of rich opulent fruit. Okay, and it is Ernie Els uh, signature. It's actually 2015 vintage, very rich and opulent wine. So here you go, six great red wines tasted. And we see that Bordeaux blend not only excels in its homeland, which is Bordeaux region itself, but also over the seas, over the oceans. All of these wines were amazing and great, rich, and definitely have aging potential. However, my favorite one from this specific flight was Argentinian El Enemigo Bordeaux blend based on Malbec grape variety. And today I actually planned a steak dinner, so this wine will be perfect for it. Once again, I want to say thank you to Eight Wines for providing these amazing wines. Be sure to check out their webpage. I will link it here and here. I like Eight Wines because they have an amazing wine selection and you can shop by expert ratings. They deliver to all Europe, including UK, and thus ensuring availability of these and many other iconic New World and European wines. Go check them out. If you like this video, make sure to watch my other video where I blind taste Chateauneuf du Pape grapes.